kinetic theory and diffusion. Here we have a solid, a liquid and a gas. When you heat up a solid, it vibrates. And when you heat up a liquid and a gas, the particles move faster. When you heat up a solid, which is represented by the orange lines, the particles can vibrate so much that they overcome the force of attraction between each other and become a liquid. When a liquid is cooled, the opposite happens. The particles have less kinetic energy and the force of attraction is not overcome, so therefore the liquid turns into a solid. A liquid can turn into a gas in two ways, evaporation or boiling. Boiling involves heating and the particles gain a lot of energy and the liquid then forms bubbles of gas. In a liquid, particles can have varying amounts of kinetic energy, which is shown by this graph. Particles with enough kinetic energy rise to the surface of the liquid and overcome the force of attraction and form a gas. When a solid becomes a liquid, that's melting. When a liquid becomes a solid, that's freezing. When a liquid becomes a gas, that's either evaporation or boiling. When a gas becomes a liquid, that is condensation. Also, a gas can turn into a solid, and a solid can turn into gas, and that is sublimation. Diffusion! Diffusion is the movement of particles from a high concentration to a low concentration. Take this experiment, where a very concentrated solution of ammonium ions is soaked into some cotton wool, and some very concentrated hydrochloric acid is soaked into some other cotton wool and placed at the other end of a tube. And this means the ammonia gas and hydrogen chloride gas are produced. After a while, you will notice a white ring appear in the tube. This is because the gases diffuse and the ammonia gas diffuses more quickly. The relative formula mass of ammonia is 17, whereas the RFM of hydrogen chloride is 36.5. This shows lighter particles diffuse more quickly than heavier ones. Diffusion can also happen with liquids. Take this small beaker of potassium permanganate and fill a large beaker with water. After a while, the potassium permanganate would have diffused throughout the entire beaker, but it is a slow process because there are only small gaps in a liquid, whereas in a gas, there is plenty of space for particles to diffuse. And finally, dilution! Suppose the smallest droplet you can see is 1 in 1,000 cm cubed, and that there are 10,000 drops in this beaker, which is 10 cm cubed. If you add 0.1 grams of potassium permanganate to this beaker of water, you can work out that in each drop there is 0.0001 gram of potassium permanganate. After transferring 1 cm cubed from the previous beaker into another containing 9 cm cubed of water, after 5 times, the potassium permanganate is barely visible. This is because there is 0.0000001 grams per droplet, which is the same as 10 to the minus 9 grams per droplet. In reality, that is the real mass of one potassium permanganate particle, which is 2.6 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. Chapter 1, done! Yay!